the ordinary chondrites are classified into three types. And this is typically done using this plot here. Now first, what are the three types of ordinary chondrites? There are the high iron, the low iron, and the low iron, low metal ordinary chondrites. The classification is then based on the iron content in olivine and pyroxene. So on the x-axis here, there's the phyolite content in olivine in mole, and on the y-axis, there's the ferrocellite content in mole in pyroxene. I mean, then look at the three groups. We find that the high iron chondrites have the olivine and pyroxene with the lowest iron content, and the LL chondrites with low metal, low iron, have the highest phyolite and ferrocellite content in olivine and pyroxene, respectively. And this uh, sounds a little bit uh, odd. So in general, there's a trend in this direction with um, fewer bulk iron. So the total iron concentration in the chondrite decreases from H to LL. And to solve the conundrum, while at the same time the iron content in olivine and pyroxene increases, there's also in the same direction an increase in the oxidation. So the LL chondrites are more oxidized compared to the H chondrites. So the little iron, or the comparatively little iron in the LL chondrites, is to a much higher degree oxidized than in the H chondrites, and therefore the LL chondrites contain more FeO, which is then, of course, located within olivine and pyroxene. So this explains why with a, a decreasing Fe, there's also an increase in FeO. Another thing you can observe here is that there's a certain correlation among these groups, and this correlation has a slope of around 0.75. So this means that, in general, the olivine takes more iron than the pyroxene. And this is because there's also a higher um, diffusion of iron into the olivine. For example, in higher petrologic types, it will always be the olivine that takes the initial iron, or more iron. Now we look at various petrologic types. For example, if there's a high petrologic LL chondrite, the individual olivine pyroxene will have um, very narrow scatters. However, when we look at an LL chondrite of a low petrologic type, say for example three, the individual olivine and pyroxene um, analysis will scatter across a larger range. And this is because initially Olivine and pyroxene are in disequilibrium. They formed individually within the protoplanetary disk. And later, when they're on the pan body and get thermally overprinted, they then basically um, exchange their iron magnesium and decrease their initial range of bulk composition. So when we look at a meteorite and measure the olivine and pyroxene, they scatter all over the place. It's most likely a primitive type, primitive, also a low petrologic type. And if they're very close together, it's more likely they are of a higher petrologic type. I then plotted data from MedBase into this diagram to see how real data look in this classification plot. So this is done here. So all the green points are classified as LL chondrites in MedBase, the orange points as L chondrites, and the blue points as H chondrites in MedBase. And we can, of course, see um, this uh, very nice, um, well, well, that basically the classification is in most cases seems to be right in MedBase um, and how people classify it, although there are some scatter, but this could be that these are uh, primitive types of the ordinary chondrites. And this is how we classify ordinary chondrites according to phyolite and ferrocellite contents.